Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this pop art poster in Word. So let's get started. So I've currently got my A4 default page here, and the first thing I'm going to do is turn this around to landscape. So I'm going to go up to the layout tab and across to orientation, click on the drop down and select landscape. And then I'm just going to zoom in. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go up to the insert tab go along to the shapes icon, click on the drop down, scroll to the bottom and I'm going to select this explosion 2. Then all I'm going to do is just click and drag. Now in order to format this shape we need to ensure that we have our format pane which is a menu on the right hand side. And there's two ways you can access that. Firstly you can double click on your shape and it will appear at the side here. If it doesn't appear, go up to Shape Format and go along to the Format Pane icon. This will give you all the different options you'll need in order to format this shape in terms of its colour and its design. So the first thing we're going to do is just to rotate it so that it's a little bit more horizontal. We can adjust this as we go as well. The next thing I want to do is to adjust the fill inside and the border. So go over to the menu, click on fill and go down to pattern fill. As you can see here you're presented with a number of different pattern options including these dots in the first two. I'm going to click on the second one. Then I'm going to go along to the foreground colour, click on the drop down and select black. Then I'm going to go down to line, I'm going to go to the colour, click on the drop down, change to black. Now yours may be on the default of black and you may not have to change those colours. Then I'm going to change the width of my line which goes around the edge of the shape by just clicking on the up arrow until I'm happy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my colour palette. In order to do that, I'm going to access the internet and in Google, I'm just going to input WOW Pop Art. And then it allows me to scroll through all the different types of images just to have a look at all the different colours that I might be using. And as you can see, there's a common theme here where yellows, blues and reds are used. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot And then close down the internet. Once I've done that I'm going to go up to the insert tab, go to the picture icon, click on the drop down and select picture from file. Then I'm just going to click on screenshot and insert. Once I've inserted my screenshot I'm going to ensure I'm on picture format. If that doesn't appear then go back and reselect your screenshot, go to wrap text click on the drop down and select in front of text. This allows you to move this screenshot round any way you need to in your image. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and move it to the side. The reason we've done that is to allow us to select all the different colour options that we want just by selecting the colours when we edit our shapes. So now go up to insert, go along to shapes again and recently use shapes there should be your explosion to icon. Just click and drag again like we did before and just move it within the first explosion. And again you can turn this shape around, just move that out a second, move this shape around and in addition once you've highlighted the shape make sure you're on shape format Go along to this icon here, which is Edit Shape. Click on the drop down and select Edit Points. Now you're presented with a red outline and black squares. If you click on the black squares, you can simply move them to anywhere you need them to go in your image. Now let's go ahead and look at the colours. So if we click on the shape again, 
go over to your format shape here, click on the bucket icon, click on fill and go along to the colour icon here. Go all the way down to more colours and you're presented with your colour wheel. In the colour wheel there's this eyedropper tool here. So if you just select your eyedropper tool, now you can go down to all of the different images on your screenshot and select a colour of your choice. So I'm just going to select this blue and click OK. And this currently has a border which I want to get rid of. So I'm going to go along to line and click no line. And then I'm just going to simply copy and paste this explosion by command or control C, command or control V. You can see that we have an additional explosion. Again, I'm going to go to fill, choose my color icon down to more colors, use my eyedropper tool, and then I'm going to select a red and click OK. And then again, I'm going to move that over the top, reduce the size a little bit. Now I'm just going to insert the name. So I go along to insert, click on the drop down for word art, and I'm going to select this orange letter. Now once this appears here, just type the first letter of your text or name, and then I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go back over to format shape and ensure I'm on text options. On the text fill, I'm going to go down to color and change the color as we've done before by more colors, select the eyedropper tool. And for this, I'm going to select a yellow and then click OK. Then I'm going to go down to text outline click on the colour outline and select black. Then I'm going to go to the width and increase the width to about 2.25. Then back up to the home tab along to the increase font size icon and I'm just going to increase that font size till I'm happy. And then I'm going to go along to the fonts and down to a font called Big Book. Now it's important to adjust your letter to exactly how you want it to look for the remainder of the word because what we're going to do is simply copy and paste. So once I'm happy with that letter, so all I'm going to do now is press Command or Control C, Command or Control V. Then I'm just going to double click, Command or Control A to select. And I'm just going to change the letters to spell out the name. Now as you can see all the letters don't quite fit so we're just going to move them and adjust them. And the way I'm going to do that is exactly the same as before. I'm going to use this little icon up here to rotate the letter and then double click on the letter Command or Control A, go back up to the Home tab and use the increase and decrease font size icons. And what I'll do is just speed up the video while I do this so that you can just come back when it's all been completed. So once I've finished doing that, you can move these letters forwards and backwards of each other if you want to. So if I wanted to move this A behind the J, click on the letter, go up to Shape Format, and go along to this section here. And here you can either bring the letter forward, you can send it backwards if I click Send Backwards, you can see the A now has gone behind the J. But I'm just going to bring that forward again. Once you're happy with exactly where the letters are, I'm going to highlight one of the letters, hit my command or control key, and continue to select all the letters. Because now we're going to make an adjustment to all of the letters with regards to their shadow. So go back up to the format shape menu, down to text options, and then down to text effects. And here you can click on this shadow menu and down to presets. I'm going to click on a preset and just click on the first icon. So all I'm going to do is use this slider and take that transparency right down so we have a nice black shadow. 
and then I'm just going to take the blur down a little bit so it's nice and sharp and then just check off. So I'm now going to get rid of this because I've got all the colours I need and now I'm just going to address the background. Because we want a patterned background we're going to have to use another shape. So go up to the insert tab, go along to shapes, down to rectangles and click on the square. And go up to the top corner and just click and drag. Once you've done that make sure you're on shape format and then go to the send backwards icon, click on the drop down and click center back. Then go over to the format shape menu, go to the bucket icon and go down to patterned fill. And then you can select any of these different pattern fills depending on what sort of effect you want. And then once you go down to your foreground colour, you'll see at the bottom you have some recent colours that you've already used. So let's just say for example we wanted the yellow. This is the sort of look that you'll get. And make sure you just drag out those edges so it covers your entire page. And again, you can be really flexible and go through all of these different options to select the one you want. And don't forget, you can go ahead and colour match again and go through a different colour set if you want to change an element. So once you're happy with the background, don't forget you can go back and adjust any of the elements here. So if you wanted to adjust this large explosion at the back, then just highlight it, click and drag, and then you can make those final adjustments. So it's just a bit of fun now. All you need to do is pop that through the printer, pop it in a frame. You can place this onto a greetings card or you can just simply send it as a gift. I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.